Hi, my name is Emma Cameron, and this presentation is a part of the RDOS Noxious Pest Program, which has the goal of educating residential tree fruit growers on their responsibility to prevent and control insect pests. This video is a part of a series that highlights different fruit types and the different pests that anyone with a fruit bearing tree or shrub may come into contact with. These videos are available to anyone that is looking to educate themselves on fruit tree care and insect pests. The Okanagan Similkameen is home to one of the best growing regions in the country, with an abundance of farms, orchards, and vineyards. Farmers in this region gather and sell their produce at local markets eight months of the year, providing a bounty of fresh produce. But some of us still want to grow our own food, whether that be for helping children to learn about where their food comes from, or just the simple satisfaction of being more self-sufficient. But this comes with a responsibility that should be known before you consider planting a fruit-bearing tree or shrub. Fruit tree growers are responsible for preventing and controlling insect pests that can not only damage their own plantings, but also neighboring growers that largely depend on fruit productions for their livelihoods. Extra time, effort, and money will be required to adequately care for your fruit tree to not only avoid harmful insect pests, but also to grow fruit that is an optimal size and flavor. Although I will be referring to trees in this series, it should be known that this refers to any plant material that supports fruit production, including berry bushes and grapevines. Also, although this video series is focused on the pests and the bylaw in the regional district Okanagan Similkameen, most of the information provided is applicable to other nearby regions and even throughout the province of BC as a whole, as general fruit tree care is applicable to anyone thinking about planting a fruit bearing tree or shrub, and many of the pests discussed threaten fruit plantings beyond the Okanagan Similkameen. The videos in this series will provide tips on general fruit tree care, pest management as a whole, and the specific pests and diseases that affect different fruit bearing trees and shrubs. Before planting your fruit tree, or even if you have just inherited a fruit tree during a recent move, it's important to understand these five essential tasks before taking it on. The most important thing is to understand the RDOS bylaw that is on the RDOS webpage for fruit tree pests. It states the responsibility of the homeowner to prevent and control insect pest infestations, and explains the steps that occur if there is a complaint about your fruit tree. This is important to understand because if there is any negligence to general care, and pest prevention and insect infestation can affect the livelihood of neighboring commercial orchards. Once you understand this bylaw, you should next ask yourself what the reason is behind planting a fruit tree. If it is for decorative and ornamental purposes, there is a plethora of beautiful ornamental trees and shrubs at your local nursery that will be a much better option and at a fraction of the cost. And to bounce off that, you must also be prepared to invest more time and money in order to avoid pest infestations. This will include diligent sanitation practice, effective pruning, ensuring the soil nutrition is adequate, and proper harvest practice. Next is a very important step that is research. Do the research on your specific fruit tree that you're wanting to plant and understand its planting requirements and its susceptibility to pests. Once you have done this and you're at your local nursery or garden center, ask questions to the employees and suppliers so you can thoroughly understand what you're getting into. To prevent insect pests, most of the time, these strategies will be essential in your fruit tree care routine. Sanitation is by far the most effective way to prevent pests. This includes keeping a clean ground cover, consistently removing any dead or rotting fruit and leaves, and having a consistent weeding routine. Pruning is also a skill in itself, and research should be done before you tackle this. It should not happen in cold temperatures as winter injuries will welcome pests and disease to your fruit tree. And your tree should be pruned significantly each year to promote light and air penetration. A simple way to avoid certain pests is thinning your fruit to singles. Most families and homeowners do not need a whole tree's worth of fruit and thinning will actually ensure your fruit size and flavor is optimal. For peaches, they should be spaced six inches apart and cherries should be thinned to 10 cherries per spur. The last way to prevent pests is very simple and will work very well, and that is bagging your fruit or your entire tree. For peaches, you can place horticultural bags or plastic bags if you're unable to find them, and place the bags over young fruitlets and leave them on for the whole growth process so pests don't feed on them or burrow into your fruit. 
Netting the entire tree is usually necessary for cherry trees, and there are especially special nets that are designed for pests like the spotted wing Drosophila, which is a very common and destructive pest in the Okanagan Similkameen. This is the basic outline for an integrated pest management strategy. When you first think you may have a pest problem, following these simple steps will help in diagnosing your problem. First, you must identify the pest type and if it is a common and severe problem in the Okanagan Similkameen. For example, the very common codling moth gets out of hand very quickly and requires immediate attention, whereas something like mites is very common in this area and a fruit tree can handle low numbers with, without any damage. Second, you must determine how severe the damage is. You must ask yourself if the tree will be severely affected and may die if immediate intervention is not done. You must also, also take into account the likelihood of spreading and how invasive it is. For example, the apple maggot should be something that's frequently looked for, even though the Okanagan Similkameen is free of this pest, as it's known to decimate crops in areas close by and must be reported immediately. Thirdly, you must determine what your plan of action is. If you decide that intervention is necessary, always use the least toxic control method possible. Using chemical intervention is typically not necessary for residential plantings and can sometimes do more harm than good by removing the beneficial insects that are keeping the pest in check. And always consult professionals if you're unsure about what to do. This is a big problem pest in the Okanagan Similkameen, and you should expect to have a problem with this pest if you're growing cherries. Cherries are the most pest-ridden fruit that is grown here, and that should be taken into account before you grow this fruit tree. Most of the time, larvae will be seen burrowed into the fruit when you go to eat it, as the damage holes are quite small and undetectable. Most obvious damage is seen if substantial feeding has occurred, which is when you'll see depressions and softening of the fruit and fluid will be released when squeezed. Adults can be classified by the black spot on the tips of their wings if it's male. Unfortunately, females don't have this, so it's often confused with the typical vinegar fruit fly. If these are affecting your crop, the best strategy is to improve your sanitation practice and be more diligent with netting your fruit tree. You should be disposing of all your infested fruit by leaving it to bake in the sun for roughly a week before taking it to your local landfill. Next is the cherry fruit fly. This is similar to the spotted wing Drosophila with identical looking larvae, but the adult is characterized by white stripes on the abdomen and black markings on the wing. Damage is very similar to the spotted wing Drosophila with damage not typically seen until larvae exit the fruit and damaged holes are sometimes visible. Management is also similar, where netting the tree with specially designed small mesh nets such as Kootenai covers will help. Another method to avoid these two pests is to remove all the fruit before the larvae emerge out of the exit holes to overwinter. It should be noted that the cherry fruit fly and the spotted wing Drosophila are often confused, but a distinct difference is when they are active. The cherry fruit fly is annual, with most of its activity occurring in summer months. However, the spotted wing Drosophila is continuous with multiple active generations and can be found at most times of the year. A common peach pest is the peach twig borer, with its red to brown worm larvae and standard gray moth adult, where the damage by this pest is typically by the larvae that bore into developing shoots and buds, causing wilting, which is a great way to identify if the pest is present. In the summer, careful inspection should be done on the stem end of the fruit to look for entry holes where larvae enter. To manage this pest, you can destroy any of the wilted shoots and place infested fruit in a sealed bag in the freezer for a few days to kill the pest before disposal to prevent the spread of this insect. Although it has a similar name, the peach tree borer is very different. The larvae are larger and are cream colored and the adult is a clear winged moth and very distinguishable. This pest is harder to detect as it bores into the actual tree. If you see a buildup of soil, sawdust, and frass, which is the excrement of the pest, at the base of the tree, you may have this pest. It loves to get into your tree through wounds or weakened spots and can actually kill your tree. To manage this, you can probe the tree at areas of entry at the base of the tree carefully with wire or a sharp knife. You may also apply trunk collars before the eggs are laid or polyester batting to trap emerging adult moths. These aren't the only pests that affect cherry and peach trees. Other ones you may see are the cherry bark tortrix, the pear slug or sawfly, 
earwigs, brown marmorated stink bug, leaf rollers, and the shot hole borer. These pests can be researched further if you decide to plant a cherry or a peach tree, as there is a chance that you may see them if you plant one of these. Pests and disease can sometimes go hand in hand, where pest problems can weaken the tree and welcome disease and vice versa. Little cherry disease is a recent disease that can decimate cherry crops in the entire region and should be checked for diligently each year. We are in a very high risk area for this disease and if you have smaller than average fruits that fail to fully ripen, lack flavor, have dull coloring, or has leaf reddening, you may have this disease and it is your responsibility by law to prevent and control it. Another big problem disease that affects many fruit types is powdery mildew. Affected plant parts should be pruned off to prevent the spread. Additionally, brown rot and peach leaf curl may affect your tree and should be dealt with right away to prevent the spread and significant damage. Now that you know all about your responsibility to prevent and control insect pests, I hope that you weigh all of your options before deciding to plant a fruit tree. With extra time and effort, a fruit bearing tree or a shrub in your backyard can offer healthy and delicious fruit, but you should speak to your local nursery or grower supply staff about what to expect before purchasing the tree. They are highly knowledgeable and can offer additional growing and pest avoidance tips and answer any of the questions you may have about growing fruit trees in your local region. Growing a fruit tree is time consuming and typically requires extra money to care for if you want delicious fruit with little to no insect pests. But you can also leave all the work to the professionals and support your local farmers markets instead. This is a good option if you are not willing to follow general care tips to prevent pests or spend the extra money to do so. Before we go, it is important to also remember that everywhere in BC is bear country. More than a quarter of all black bears in Canada live in BC. And here in the Okanagan, bears have come into conflict with humans in all parts of the region, even in the middle of every community, town, and city. Often these bears are lured in by unsecured garbage and attractants like fruit trees, berry bushes, and backyard fowl. Caring and maintaining your home-raised food sources goes a long way to having a pest-free, bountiful harvest that you get to enjoy while keeping wildlife wild and community safe. For more information on pests that affect different fruit trees, there are fact sheets available on the RDOS website that are available to anyone considering planting a fruit tree and are organized by fruit tree type. These are some important contacts and links that you should have readily available if you're considering planting a fruit tree or already have one. There are two links that you should read on general care and pest management tools that are extremely helpful and are important reference guides. Additionally, if you have any indication of little cherry disease, you should contact the Plant Health Laboratory, and even before planting your cherry, cherry tree, you should understand that there is a BC law that dictates you have a responsibility to prevent the spread of this disease. If you have any indication of brown marmorated stink bug, another potentially disastrous problem for the Okanagan Similkameen, you should report it online or contact Susanna from the BC Ministry of Agriculture.